Hello, hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Doing some quick mic checks. Welcome YouTube, welcome Twitch, welcome Facebook, welcome Steam. Gonna be getting started here in just a couple of minutes. Ready or not, here we are. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream, where I am your host and your guide, Eric, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I'm joined on the comms with Gary, another community manager. Say hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Perfect. Oh my gosh. And what we are going to be doing today for the next two hours is highlight Everspace 2. That's the big thing, as well as provide a means for you to communicate directly with us. Woo, through the course of these two hours, woo, also, woo, that's great too. <laughs> but through the course of these two hours, we will be taking your questions and all of the chats that are live out there right now. Oh my gosh, every single one of them. So if you're ever like, well, hey, I've always had this sort of question in the back of my mind. What's the plan for Everspace 2's future? Or how does Rockfish operate in this capacity? Or blah, 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 whatever. Ask them in our chats because we will have certain times during the course of this stream where we will be answering as many as we humanly possibly can. If there are more basic questions and whatnot, also be primed because there, we have a lot of very informed community persons and they will very helpfully respond to you in kind as well. Won't you guys? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, um, <clears throat> through the gameplay segment, we are on a development build. So that means you're gonna see stuff that isn't actually released yet, but is in the pipeline, like this Blightmonger Hazard Plating, an upcoming set that we will be launching for free soonish. It's a fall update exclusive. And by exclusive, I mean it's only coming in the fall, but it will be for anybody owning Everspace 2. So that, you know, that means if you're on PlayStation, if you're on Xbox, if you're on PC, doesn't matter where you're from, you are going to get this free content just for owning the game as a sort of thank you from us because we just want to add more love into the game space. That's honestly what it comes from. So uh, yeah, gonna be a good old time. If any point in time you also have questions about the content that you're seeing that's completely new, uh, you can ask about it, but also know that there could be some limitations in how we can respond since we are, uh, we actually do have quite a number of elements that we're still kind of holding back from so that you are uh, gonna get just a huge package of information when the right time comes. That's right, even though we have highlighted several new set items already, as well as a number of little other features, there's still so much more. Oh my goodness. And all for free. So let's go ahead and I'm going to mark some of these things as seen because I uh, I don't want to get completely overwhelmed by little marker ticks and stuff. Oh, maybe we should equip some of these things though. 
Um, yeah, so let's continue our journey. Holy crap, that's a uh, massive. When did we get that? When did we find, when did we find this? Was that last? Holy crap, did we really pick that up and I just never noticed? That is a massive gain. Holy cow. All right. Well, we're using that now. It's ours. <laughs> Great. Super duper. I don't have a lot of the set items uh, combined to start getting any of these sets. So like the Storm uh, Chaser set, for example, <clears throat> focuses a lot on reflecting damage as well as energy orb gains. So if you have ever been struggling on your sort of energy management, the uh, Storm Chaser set might actually be something you look towards in the future while also giving you some rather strong retaliation effects. So yeah, we can talk more about that as time goes on. Where we left off in our story, we are playing on nightmare difficulty <clears throat> because I'm a crazy person. But also we're doing this to highlight just the challenges that you can face within Everspace 2, as well as just highlight some mid-game, high-level, hopefully high-level gameplay experiences that you could also be participating in. I am playing with mouse and keyboard, and uh, away we go. So when last, yeah, when last we met, we had this scout. We've been playing ranged, carefully ranged, so as to not just die instantaneously from everything. Uh, but I do think we want to change that up. I think we want to purchase a new ship. So we're going to head over to a ship dealer in today's stream and grab something new. And I don't know what ship options are going to be. They could be anything. If you guys do want a particular ship, though, you should sound off in the chat. Maybe we can work something out, but it's probably going to come down to whatever the highest tier ship is. Let's be real. Let's, let's be real. All right. Good, good, good. So we're heading back over to this uh, smuggler base. This is where our current mission, which is picking up the pieces, <clears throat> is leading us to. Uh, we've just discovered Kala as we found Eduardo on, what's the planet name? Athon 1, I think. <clears throat> and so we now we have to start getting these like pieces called spatial bypasses, I think is what they're called. No, actually, I don't think that's what they're called. But also, I'm skipping cutscenes and whatnot, um, so if you are interested in the story, that's not what today's stream is all about. The stream is more about connectivity to our community. That's why the questions are going to be the focal point. That's why uh, there's going to be lots of explaining little tidbits of game information and details, all that stuff. So, less story-driven and much more community-driven and that front. Cool. That was a lot of talking. Now let's start poking around and seeing what we can purchase. That's not, that's not a bad option. We are kind of pressed for credits, I'm noticing. Uh, maybe we'll just sell some stuff here. Because we do, we have quite a number of things. 4K, but also, that that is a dangerous one. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna sell that one. That one's a little more dangerous than I would like it to be. We're gonna swap out the damage for uh, limiter instead of booster. Hopefully that's gonna be more applicable to the ship that we end up choosing. Uh, let's see. There's also gonna be new item attributes that you'll see as we're picking up new gear as well. Like this one, killing an enemy temporarily increases the weapon's damage by 1% up to 25% for eight seconds. <clears throat> So lots of new things to keep your eyes peeled. Otherwise, how is everybody doing this week? Everyone ready to close down their week and get into the weekend? <laughs> I want you to sound off. It's always nice hearing where you guys are at and what you've been up to as well. But yeah, we have a lot to sell here because we've collected a lot of blueprints at this point. That flak is not a bad opportunity, honestly. I think we're actually going to swap it out for the um, the railgun. I think we're going to swap it out for the, the well, not railgun, gas cannon, excuse me. Uh, autonomous repair bay. Let's just use it because we can. Oh, actually, the precision is really nice on this. Um, what's our stats look like? Mm. 
starting off the stream with a nice slow process of looking at equipment. This is something that is going to be a bit of what you're dealing with, especially in the mid game. So I'm kind of glad that we're highlighting this. Anybody who is familiar with any game with loot as some semblance of a focal point knows that there's a little bit of care that must be taken into just picking things up and plopping it on your ship. We're gonna go with this high velocity flak instead. A prime zapper is awfully tempting, but we're gonna sell that. Genesis barrier instead of a shield ST. Genesis barrier, part of the autonomous set this will actually pair with our repair bay. So I feel like even though the recharge speed is not as good, overall, this is gonna be better for us, if not only because of that combination. So now while in combat, our armor will regenerate 2% per second so long as shields are full. For those who have seen this set before in a prior stream, this has changed. In fact, all of the new content that you'll be seeing from time to time in this could change at any given time up until our release of said content this fall. These adjustments have been made for balancing purposes and fairness and also for fun. Honestly, like some stuff just didn't feel as fun. That's why you see the changes because now it's more fun. That's why we're doing it. All right, I'm gonna sell this. Blueprint already on that one as well. My goodness, everything. Whoop, 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 whoop. Slow down there. Hmm. Chance to jam the target's weapon system with each hit for two seconds. That's not that's not bad. And a chance to hit with corrosion damage. Uh, how's that compare to our, our flag? <clears throat> you know? I think we're going to use it. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. We, we found this high velocity flak, but uh, no, we're going to go with the... We're going to try to jam their weapon systems and also deal corrosion damage. That seems good. Uh, I keep wanting the, this equalizer. Equalizers are so good in this game. Let's see. But I think we are just gonna go ahead and move on, sell this, uh, and we can sell that as well since we have the storm chaser here looking good. All right. A couple things that we're probably being way too picky about. Let's go ahead and dismantle this. <gasps> oh my gosh. And, uh, I mean, we're not using it currently, but we are going to save it just in case our new ship has three weapon slots, because that might be a nice addendum to our arsenal. All right, last but not least, we're just going to mark this as red. Uh, we're also going to... We can't do that, so that's fine. Uh, let's see. Anything... Bioprocessors, so close. So close. I am curious. Let's look at the bioprocessor. We could, in fact, make them. But it's going to eat up our flawless culver crystals. Ah, no, we're going to save it. We're going to save it. Okay. Let's let's show some, some gameplay, huh? I reached you. I wanted to thank you again for all you have done for us. How's your father? Were people able to do anything for him? Yes. Some loot. That's why I'm I so think these guys dropped it whenever I blasted them from afar. I just couldn't see them. About the redeemers. Okay. Oh, come on. Hurry up, talk. Look, hurry up and talk. Visit on Avonrest. My father would like to meet you himself. And we'd like to you. Oh, that's a teleport drone. Oh, boy. I'll swing by when I can. Thanks so much. I'll see you then. Where'd he go? He's messing with me. We're just leaving. We're just leaving. We're gonna go to Prescott. We're gonna buy ourselves a new ship. <laughs> My goodness. Wait, actually, oh man, I do want to have the opportunity to get more ships. I have an idea. Okay, hang on a second, hang on a second. So guys, remember when I said that there's some stuff that's not ready to show yet? Okay, hang on, I've got an idea. Let me just, we're just gonna put ourselves right here. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be, also, wow, I just, I just green noticed screen. that clip. The green screen, yeah, the clipped uh, uh, green screen uh, is real crazy. That's fine, don't, don't even worry about that. The main thing is that I'm just gonna come over here. Uh, yeah, perfect, perfectly placed. Uh, definitely nothing behind over there. <clears throat> Let's see, we're gonna, 
<laughs> we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this track. Gonna just get some more ship upgrade options and opportunities. That's what we're looking for. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's definitely all we need for the moment. Cool. Neat. That was easy. That was simple. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, no. It's totally fine, Flory. It's totally fine. The important thing is there was an attempt. <laughs> So should you guys um, discover it, there will be more perks uh, in the future. And as you probably have just saw, we have been listening to the community feedback. You guys have made a number of pretty solid points regarding the overall pacing and enjoyment factors of Everspace 2. And we want to honor that. We'll talk more about those details and those points in the future. So first things first, we're getting a new ship. Let's see what we can find. This is not a ship dealer. Hmm. We'll do the mission chain thing first, and then we'll go get a ship. Perfect. New light fast ship. I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what options are. Oh, we got some good options. We have a vindicator. I don't know if we've actually flown a vindicator yet during this particular save file. That might be a great option. It's also the highest tier, and this is something that we can kind of talk about um, right now. Oh, I need to. I need to unselect a thing, uh, and maybe bring me over just a tad more. There we go. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, for those of you who haven't seen this ship dealer page there have been some adjustments in its layout just some minor adjustments mainly that you can see the trade in price versus the full price uh, we were noticing that it kind of was annoying that you would look at the full price and know that you couldn't purchase it in the gameplay like that just kind of it was it was like a temptation that was almost like oh well i can't afford this ship so i can't even get it right now um that's kind of untrue because you can trade them in so that's why we added this trade in price here versus the full price and you can immediately look at your buy and sell current as the first option, as opposed to just buy and transfer a new ship altogether. Just a little tweak, little adjustment that helps things out quite a lot. Uh, otherwise, let's look at some of these other ships really quick. Ooh, oh, that's a beautiful looking striker though, am I right? Gosh, that's nice. Some of those models been tweaked or adjusted perhaps? Hmm, I don't know, maybe they have. Goodness, I love the way that these are looking. We'll just like scroll down and look at the other ones that are here too, just because we can. Not for any particular reason, of course, just you know. But yeah, I think we are gonna have to go with the Vindicator. I think we're gonna swap over using our drone buddies. It's gonna be a huge adjustment from going from a scout to this Vindicator, but I think that's what we want to do. And that's what we're doing. I've just chosen. It's done. I love that everyone's like, oh no, interceptor. Oh, wasp, stinger. Oh, it's... nope, sorry. I've made my decision. <laughs> Already made my decision. All right, let's see here. We can sell some of this stuff that we found. Uh, we also probably want to have the EMP missiles instead of the destabilizers, because these can kind of auto fire and give us some semblance of an effect. Uh, even though it is reduced since it auto fires um, but yeah we'll go with that it'll be fine probably and we're just gonna sell these two uh, we'll work our way back up with credits and let's see that's about all i'm seeing for the moment so yeah let's just keep going I didn't even look at my passives. Uh, let's see. We have drones are invulnerable during flanks. We have 50% reduced damage from enemy drones. Uh, and drones are immune to all debuff conditions. 
All right, I'll take that. I'll take that because I already took it. We're not gonna customize our ship now because I've been talking a lot. I want to get into some actual authentic combat style gameplay, which is what you're gonna get a lot of in Everspace 2. Request a new paint job. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna move things along first. Let's test out this ship at this unknown signal. See how things work themselves out. We are gonna go ahead and keep this rail gun. Oh, goodness. This is gonna be tricky. First, let's look at the debris fields. Maybe we can find a way to build up some drones first. It's awfully tempting. Okay. Any debris? There is a chance that whenever you're- yeah, there we go. You get wreckage. It spawns close to any sort of debris that you find. Just as freebies. That's gonna help us out quite a lot. So next up, we are going to... Get into range. And blast this from as far away as we possibly can, honestly. There we go, perfect. And of course, you show up right next to me, that's fine. Come the party. Good. Oh man. I do love the way that the, the flak sounds. It definitely has a nice meaty pop to it. That's for sure. Ooh, a secure hold. This guy's got to go next. I don't want those mines destroying all my drones. There we go. Good, good, good. Things are coming together pretty well. Thanks, Alec. Nice. Okay, next round. Wasn't too many of them that came in. That's good. Nice. All right, so we did get one new set item, <clears throat> it looks like, that we haven't shown yet, I think. And we got the Secure Hold. This is from the Escort Duty set. Collecting loot grants an 8% damage reduction for four seconds to a max of 40%. So straight up, when you just collect loot, you're in the heat of battle and you just, uh, have a big pocket of loot and you suck it all in, you could probably max that out pretty quickly, honestly, to 40%. Reducing damage while you're just in combat for collecting stuff. The Escort duty set at two, you get a plus 25% increase to your resistant attribute. That's interesting, that's new. Don't think we've seen that anywhere else before. And at three, you get increased shields, armor, and hull for each free cargo slot. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. 0.5% increase for all of those. So the more space you have in your cargo, the greater the benefits become. All right, let's look and see what we've got here. We've got corrosion mines that are... Uh, I kind of like our EMP missiles a bit more. I'm not going to use the shield. But we'll at least think on some other things. I 
and I want to do this one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and do a high risk area. I'm feeling pretty good about this particular ship. So let's go ahead and challenge ourselves. Gonna go ahead and challenge ourselves. Haven't, I have just looked over, see a first time chatter, the guy in the distance over on Twitch. Haven't flown a heavy ship during my place time yet, but it definitely looks a lot less clunky to fly than I thought it'd be. Yeah, I, I, could, I could understand that. I could understand that. Yeah, what blows my mind is how few players end up purchasing light ships. Just from the stats that we have kind of been picking up across the board, a lot of players tend to actually go and st they either stay with the original ship, the Sentinel, for a pretty long time, or they will uh, go to a heavy ship. Primarily the gunship is the next most popular option, it seems. I guess now's a good time to talk about how the sound design of the game has also been slowly getting modified as well. So you will, in fact, hear adjusted music and maybe even a little bit of new music as we are going through the motions today. I want you over here. Yes, much better. <laughs> I really wanted to get their drones dead before they got in range of mine, because now, uh, as you are all probably noticing, my drones are gone! Let's get some debris. Yes, no, maybe? Anything? Nothing? Well, that stinks. All right. Billy and Frank, I'm counting on you. We gotta overcome these odds. Oh boy, here we go. Ah! Nope, down here, please. Favor is swinging back in for us. All right, we're gonna use our alt. I'm sure somebody's probably mentioned it a number of times. That was a big boomer. Ah. Oh, wow, that was painful. In retrospect, probably wasn't the best thing to have a location that explodes because now all of our drones are usually gonna get exploded inside of that space. But, you know, can't win them all. Down there, please. Over here, please. Thank you kindly. How did that miss? Goodness. 
We gotta pick up more drones. Come on! There we go. <laughs> I feel like we are playing with fire every time we go into those big old explosions. Level 21? Oh my gosh. Let's gain some distance. Things are actually going pretty well here. It's just, uh... Just a matter of taking our time. Something that's something we really appreciate about the HRAs actually is that you're not rushed. You just have to be methodical. Oh good, we jammed his weapon so he can't launch a mine. Alright, let's get our drones back. Good, good. Go for the elite, please. Ouch! Hello, asteroid. See more drone opportunities. We're probably going to go take them. What do you think, Gary? Do you think we should answer some questions while we're in the middle of this? Um, I've got one that you could possibly answer while you're flying around. We've got another one that you probably need to dock or that's come in from Facebook. Okay. Um, but we can try the one on, from Pesky Husky over on YouTube um, okay. and regarding some weapon choices. Um, it says Everspace 2 has a cool variety of weapons to choose from. Uh, however, do you plan on considering players' requests into the game regarding uh, maybe designing kind of or uh, naming uh, any new weapons? player requests for weapons, like the names, as well as how they're operating, um, that's that's interesting. I mean, technically we have. That's something that we've been tracking um, through the course of the whole early access process. Um, while I can't give any particular examples, um, aside from maybe like the backer legendaries, um, it's something that we do monitor. Like if people say like, oh man, it would have been so cool if we had a weapon that did this or that or the other thing, I mean, we're, we're listening to that. We've got our ears open for that. Um, and, you know, some of the modifications that we're actually including, the item modifications in this coming uh, update, were inspired by some of those very comments we got from the community through early access or even after launch itself. Just some cool, cool stuff out there. And uh, yeah, we're definitely open, open to listening and uh, seeing what we can do. Now, I should also caveat that because, you know, this is a fully released game now. We're not trying to, like, fill the gaps of what's missing because that's that's not how this works. We're very happy with how everything has come together. When it comes to adding more from this point, it's more because we can, not because we have to, right? So if you're taking this response to this message as like, oh, yeah, they're still taking complete feedback and I have a chance to get my weapon idea into the game, it's a very slim chance, okay? Very, very slim chance uh, that we would just add a new item or weapon because a community person gave us an idea. Um, it looks more like <clears throat> that if you were to comment on something you really enjoy or something that you kind of was wished into the game, we can evaluate what's currently working and what's not working and maybe shift some things around, maybe modify something um, at best, right? So, yeah. Hopefully that's 
fairly clear on that front, uh, but uh, I guess the really super short answer is, yes, we have been listening to the community in regards to items, not so much naming conventions, that's more been internal writing and stuff, but uh, it's definitely happened, and it definitely can continue to happen, just probably not nearly as likely. Yeah. What's the other? What's the other question? Let's go ahead and go with the hard question too. Uh, well, the hard question is it's, uh, just to show off uh, to some of the new users that have joined us on Facebook. Uh, would like to see how you modify a ship and the limitations of modifying a ship. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, for sure. I can I can definitely dive into that um, whenever we get back to Prescott or so. That'll be a nice time to just go into not only mo various modifications but also the customization, the color customization, since we haven't done that yet. So I like that. That's a great question. Now we are almost done with this HRA. We just gotta beat a big old boss guy who shows up in a moment. Actually, let's focus these drones down. That might be enough for what we need and also give us the drone power. Ha! Oh, Ravager's here too? Jeez. Yeah, we're just gonna be super picky and we're just gonna go for the drones. Let's see if I can uh, top this off right here. There we go. Who needs to fight a drone carrier when just a drone's all you need? All right, let's go ahead and change our viewport for this next bit just because some people don't know that you can actually uh, do this in first person. Woo! Now, this is probably going to be a little bit of an endurance test here. But we're going to do what we can. All right, good. Good damage. Good damage. Those are weak spots, so everybody is aware of those blue blue bits inside of the ship. When it opens up those coils, you can blast them for additional damage. Is that the technical term? Blue bits? Yeah, we're gonna go with blue bits. <laughs> this will be the killing blow. Boom! Oh, really? He had like half a hit point left. Did you see that? Ridiculous. Yeah, you missed blue bits. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the blue bits, yeah. <laughs> Goodness. All right, let's go ahead and pull in our blueprint. elements. Blueprint for homing missiles, wonderful. We'll definitely take that. Got the catalyst for barrage, ooh. Um, where was that wreckage? I'm totally missing a drone. Dev builds are fickle at times. We should totally be able to interact with this and build a new drone. Hans Christian, I'm so sorry, but this bug keeps returning. It plagues us so, ugh, how frustrating. <laughs> but I digress. You already have five? Oh, do I? The indicator was showing that I only had four. So maybe it's the indicator that's wrong. All right, let's go ahead and head to Noah Damaris, or Damaris pronunciations, am I right? Uh, and then once we get there, we are going to highlight that uh, Facebook user. Who was, who was that from? What's their, I missed it. Uh, Nils Flowen over Nils Flowen. on uh, Facebook. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for that question. I'm happily able to show you a little bit more of the ship customization as well as the visual customization side. Since there is a, a bit to it, there's a bit to it. <clears throat> for the Vindicator in particular, a big focus is going to be on your lovely little drones. Every single class puts a lot of emphasis in their expertise, which is one of six main attribute stats for your ship itself, with the expertise being unique towards your bonus. The Vindicator is a drone boat, and as such, its expertise aids its drones. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> just talking very briefly about the ship itself. Let's uh, just kind of 
Let's just do this. We'll do inventory. So here are the six different attributes that I was talking about. The main format structure here is that, you know, you are a one man fighter, of course, in the game, single player experience. Um, so you want to kind of optimize your strategies in order to best benefit your play style. For me, I actually want to get more expertise in this particular build. Uh, my drones don't get a lot of benefits here because this is only, it's not even 600 points of expertise, but you can see this expertise. And again, it's different for every single ship class. This one aids our drones in increasing their hull and their damage and also increases our wreck interaction range. So that way, if we're blowing stuff up from far away, we can actually engage with that wreckage without having to fly up super close to it. In addition to that expertise, you also have your traditional sort of firepower, your damage output, your precision, which is your critical hit uh, components that you're going for as well. Very good if you can't have more proc chances. Of course, we're all gamers here. You understand what that means. I'm certain you do. We have structure here as well, which is all about the strength of your ship, as well as reducing the module damage. That means these different components on board your ship, they can break at times. Um, but the greater your structure is, prevents them from getting broken nearly as much. That can start happening when your hull starts taking damage. When something gets broken, it's not nearly as useful. Say your railgun loses its range or your shield uh, loses its recharge speed. Very, very damaging stuff. We have resistance, which reduces the uh, damage for your hull and also reduces the conditions that can affect your ship. And we have utility, which is all, well, mostly about your device usage. Um, your devices are like your EMP generator or your magnetic repulsor, which pushes targets away from you, stuff like that, as well as increases the damage of your ultimate if it is applicable. So lots and lots of different ways you can structure your attributes alone, but then you have all of these other parts of your ship that you can start customizing, including a slew of different weapon types, everything from like this rail gun, which is ranged to up close and personal scatter guns, uh, to middle ground solutions that are area of effect like this flak, um, and then a variety of secondary weapons to complement that as well, from EMP missiles to uh, just rockets that super barrage your opponent then of course you have all these different modules that you have to prepare for your ship, including but not limited to your energy core, which is all about energy management, your shields, which is all about your shields, your plating, which is all about your armor. Then you have your sensors, which gives you varying ranges on what you can see and track. Then you have your booster, which affects uh, how much you can, like how quickly you are boosting around um, and recharging that. And then finally the cargo unit, which gives you more cargo slots, but also gives you a lot of other added benefits uh, on its side. Every single one of these items have different modifiers. So uh, this one's a good example-ish uh, where the two modifiers are adding structure and expertise. Um, kind of, I feel like that's kind of unlucky. I like the ones where you get a lot more um, stats, specific stats uh, that are versatile. I don't have any on right now are you serious all of these are just straight up attribute bonuses do we have any down here okay yeah so like um i just i, I just need one standard module okay so like for this one as an example it has the four percent increased primary weapon damage on an energy core um or this one has five percent increased alt generation um or this one has plus uh six percent increased energy damage all those percentages kind of stink but if you can pair them together with the other items that you're building up, you can create some pretty powerful combinations. All right, now all of that's kind of like this main component of your ship. We're still going though, because all of these stats over here, this is going to be largely affected by the ship class. And the ship class we currently are flying is this Vindicator, which you can see here. The Vindicator is much more beefy, but also kind of sluggish. Um, let's go ahead and make it look different. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use this custom slot and start uh, choosing some different colors. Uh, but all of the ships are, are fully customizable on this front. Um, and all of the different ships are gonna have varied stats for your ship speed and handling and your shields and your armor and your hull, um, as well as the different number of slots on the ship itself for like weapon slots, secondaries, consumables, those will vary depending on your ship. So I've given you so much information on this right out of the gate like it's you can tell how expansive it is right and each one of these ship classes has those specific traits that are going to make it better in one field or worse in another or you know etc etc um it's it's pretty wild 
It's pretty wild. Let's go ahead and get a little wild here. Let's make this eerie black. We're gonna metallicize it so it gets nice and dark and reflective. Let's complement it with something. Uh, maybe I'm feeling I'm feeling green today. Feeling green. We're gonna do like this dark olive. Maybe maybe we'll do. Hang on, hang on a second. I have an idea. That is way too much. You calm down there. Um, something like. I almost want to like highlight the green somehow. Hmm. That's also too much. I do like the contrast though, that's nice. We're just gonna metallicize this and we're gonna let that last little bit of green uh, just shine through. Maybe even make it really bright. Yeah, let's just... There we go, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. And just, just raise the gloss to an obnoxious level. Nice. Awesome. So let's see if we can kind of complement that with some window tint colors. Yeah, okay, perfect. Engine colors as well. We only have the tea leaf, so it's just going to have to work for now. We're going to go ahead and keep the green tea leaf on there. Emissive lights, do we have green? We've got green. Excellent. Super green theming. Those emissives are these lights that are uh, shining. There's two different sets of them. So like if I were to go over here, you can see the red set up front. Um, and if I were to change this to say orange, you could see the orange sets kind of near the rear. This can also appear on the body of the ship as well as the cockpit. Uh, but yeah, we are gonna go with the, the lime lights. And then last but not least, we have these varied decals based on what you have unlocked. We're gonna go ahead and go with our professional and just color it more accordingly so that it shows through. Where's the text at? Oh my gosh. I'm missing, I'm missing the text location. Why can't, oh, it's right there. Cool. Just as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna, just gonna be super plain and just make it all green. Look at that. I like it. Last but not least, we do have these ship modules, which uh, granted, maybe I should have customized these before, but I digress. Um, you can change different parts of your ship. Um, so there's bodies like this, we just call it the front of the ship. I kind of like this one that's a little bit more recessed. Um, you have different wings, but we only have one wing out of eight unlocked, so can't really show any more of that. Then we have the uh, engine types that we can also change between. I'm a big fan of the type two engines, but uh, let's just change it up and let's go to the type one as well. And this will be our new ship that we're flying. So yeah, after all of that information on a ship, whew, I have to just follow up with that Facebook user one more time and make sure uh, that they got all the information that they were seeking. Uh, yes, they've already wishlisted the game, so oh, I think you've done a wonderful job there. Yeah, because I really <laughs> hadn't even gone into devices yet. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just a very, very, very brief thing on devices. Devices will level up as you um, invest into them. And there's a slew of different devices that can do a, a number of different things. And actually, I want to change out one of my devices now. Uh, we're going to swap out the magnetic repulsor, my beloved, uh, for the front shield generator, also my beloved. We're going to use this bad boy. Um, and then there's also perks that you can modify your builds in different ways, too. Um, we're going to go uh, with... Actually, what type, of, what type of shield do we have again? What are we, the Genesis barrier? Yeah, we don't we don't want to use defensive massacre here. We probably want to stay on an exit strategy. Um, Downtime warrior is not a bad idea. We'll do that one. And let's see, our shields probably aren't gonna stay fully. Well, actually, no, I think drones are gonna take over and take a lot of the damage uh, away from us. It's going to be whenever our drones go down that this is going to be a problem. But if we can use that excessive force, increasing our damage by 30% before our shields go down, we should be able to tackle a lot of conflicts. So let's just uh, hope on that a little bit, I think. Let's just hope on that a little bit. Also, that new catalyst. Uh, it's powerful. I thought we got a different one. Which one did we get? Efficient, tuned, primed. 
What was the one we unlocked earlier? Oh, barrage. Increased damage by 4% each second, firing to a maximum of 40%. Mm. Man, that doesn't look familiar. That's interesting. Uh, but all right, cool. Let's get back into the action, shall we? Got our ship nice and customized. Looks good, feels good. And of course, to maximize how everything's coming together, we want to cause some chaos. Man, flat cannons, am I right? Uh, let's see, do we have... <laughs> <laughs> We might just change this for the moment. Time window, in which case, this automated shipment must contain the item in question. Flat cannons can be really, really effective. It's clear that we need to up our damage output. That's for sure. Damage output is locking. Oh, just stabilize though. That should be a big hit. All right, I'll take that. So this is the front shield generator. Just using it to block damage coming straight at us, as you probably would expect from a shield that is in the front. Oh, we're wanted, woo, excellent. Not really that excellent, but uh, you know, what can you do? <laughs> we'll grab this container as well. Malamite crystal, that's always a plus. Excellent. Drones just spectating. Yeah, 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 it's fine. It's fine, Kazan. They were like, we're not gonna make immoral decisions. Those drones are better than me. That's basically what was going on. That's basically what was going on. <laughs> All right, so we are wanted in that location. We could pay a bounty to remove it, but also if we just stay, steer clear of the environment for a while, the bounty should also go away. Um, oh, that's a, that's a really low high risk area. A low risk area in a, in a way. Um, but yeah just gonna wipe that one from existence and our mission wants us to head back to the home base I'm not entirely sure we should do that right now instead I want to peruse Union a little bit more and see if we can find some new secrets mm. Jesse C says my birthday is the first week of October. Had no plans to get myself anything really, but dang, I think I need a hard copy of the PlayStation 5 edition, even though I play on PC. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I believe if information uh, is correct, and, and Gary, you could just like double check me, uh, that uh, the physical PlayStation 5 copies, um, that's scheduled for October 3rd, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, so it, it is a good looking case. Oh my gosh, yeah. I don't blame you. I don't even own a PlayStation 5 and I want it. Like, let's be real. <laughs> oh. Good, good stuff. All right, what's well, not good stuff are all the mines in this area though. Mines uh, liked to kill me a lot. Oh my gosh, we're just gonna get out of there. <clears throat> Flying Dutch, just please come here as we explore the remnants of this space. He just teleported away, oh boy. Teleport drones. We were far enough away from that drone. Wow, okay. So we got some outlaw raiders. Nothing too, nothing too bad in this area. So that's gonna be nice. 
Ooh, madcaps. Raise your hand in the <laughs> chat if madcaps give you a lot of trouble, because... Because they drop mines, they're a pain in my butt, that's for sure. <laughs> Indicator. Oh my gosh, I'm so used to that scout and how maneuverable it was. Changing from a light ship to a heavy ship, you can feel it. It's there's definitely there's definitely an impact there. But that's okay. We'll make it work. The fact that we can actually get hit and survive is nice. I will not deny that. Alright. We have to navigate our way into this. Oh my gosh. Oh, I miss you, Scout, so much. <laughs> you all saw that, right? Like, the first shot. I'm not going crazy, am I? Let's move the ship into the right position. All right, perfect. All right. Device charger, all right. Device charger, ooh, a sustained Jaeger? Ooh. Ooh. I do like the Jaegers. We actually did do a little bit of a balancing adjustment. It's probably not possible to see too much because this is a level 19 for all of you veterans out there, so you probably can't really tell the difference too much. But um, there was some elements regarding the, I think it was the velocity and the energy consumption of the Jaeger that we had to adjust in correspondence with the synchro pulse so you'll probably see a little bit more of that uh, whenever we get to our next update it's a wonderful weapon because it has zero spread one of the few weapons that has zero spread actually but uh yeah turns out it was a little too good just a little a little too good not, not like crazy don't even get me started on the freaking synchro pulse that guy, that's like cheating. <laughs> In the best way possible. If you're a Synchro Pulse fan out there, it's, I mean, I certainly am, uh, you know, it's totally good. We have a Genesis Barrier out here. Uh, we also have an Escort Duty Bulkhead. Look at that. Now I have to start deciding if maybe we want to start cycling some things out. You know, our hazard plating, while nice, being immune to radiation, we're not going to come across a lot of radiation here. And the repair per kill really sucks here. Um, the main benefit on the set items, and I'm sure that most of you could probably figure this out yourself, but if you haven't noticed, set item stats are not nearly as good as the standard item stats. The benefit comes from being in a set. So if you're utilizing the set, they become very powerful. But if you're not utilizing the set, eh, you know, they're not, they're not really that great on their own, except in special circumstances. So here, I think what we want to do is we want to pick up this escort duty bulkhead. Um, we don't have another set piece of it, but I think I just want that 30% damage reduction to armor from frontal attacks. Very straightforward. Ha! Get it? Um, and it, it's going to be a nice buy. So we're going to go ahead and buy and equip, and we're just going to sell the current one. So see you later uh, to, what did we sell? Shoot, what's it called? Hazard plating. There we go. <clears throat> Awesome. Now let's go ahead and sell some more stuff, organize our inventory so that we are ready to go into our next big event. Let's go ahead and open up the doors for more questions that we've received. I can answer those while we're kind of scooting through these elements. Okie dokie. Uh, we've got a question from J.R. Panciotti over on YouTube, which okay. is pretty much um, probably answered with our FAQ that we've got posted up on our Discord. But, okay, that's fine. Um, if you could just kind of iterate um, what's going to happen with the free update that's coming and then what's going to be included in the paid DLC, because they're wondering if there's any more new storyline or new areas uh, to come with the game. Okay, yeah. So the short of it, um, from kind of like you can already read from our frequently asked questions and, and kind of what we've discussed in the past, and that's totally fine to help out users who have no idea. It's it's totally fine. Um, the big thing is that our free content update is all focused around content. 
That's why we're calling it the free content update. And that's going to be all of these uh, variant items that are generally sets that you're seeing me as I'm collecting through here. Um, I also went ahead and I got the second uh, set bonus for escort duty. It's one of the things I swapped. As well as a lot of item attributes. So those you haven't seen too many of here, but basically those are going to be um, stuff that just hasn't existed in the game before. Those little added marker points um, on various items. Those are what those item attributes are. And there's a slew of those that are coming into the game. And when I say slew, that doesn't actually sound like a lot. There's actually a good number. I'm not going to say that number at this time um, because we still have a number that we could show. <clears throat> but there's a lot of that style of content, not because it's necessary for the game. It's just because we, we want to add more to it just because we can. It's kind of a way to give back to you guys. Uh, some of it is formed some, through some semblance of community suggestions, and it's just fun to have more options as a whole. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys would agree with that as well. Um, it also grants a lot more player agency over your builds and getting things min-maxed, which who doesn't love that from any sort of looter shooter, right? Um, so there's a lot of goodness that comes from that. Now jump over to the DLC. The DLC is an expansion that will expand upon the story of Everspace 2 after the events or perhaps during the events or perhaps even through the events of the overarching storyline thereof, as well as new locations, which we've already alluded to quite heavily could potentially mean new systems that you could explore. Um, and that style of front where the game itself is expanding in its very nature, okay? Mostly missions, side missions, jobs, uh, stuff stuff like that, you're gonna see more of, uh, well, I, I said jobs, that's not actually fully accurate. More think of missions, side missions, locations. That's the big thing to think of regarding the expansion. And that's going to encapsulate a lot, a lot of additional time and opportunity that you'll get once we get to that point. There are also going to be a number of additions to the game beyond that. Uh, we could very much go into the fact that um, the content, the game content, like just items itself, for example, we could absolutely add more items as well through the DLC, um, especially where relevant or other things of that nature. And we will explain more about those details as we get closer to it. But for now, that's gonna be your key difference the free content update is literally expansions on the itemization, as well as a couple of UI tweaks, modifiers, perk additions, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and the expansion is a literal expanding of the story and the world of Everspace 2. Cool. Great question. Excellent. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, I mean, we've got some follow-up questions about uh, are there any new side missions in the free content, but that's kind of more towards the expansion. Um, yeah. And then will there be any new types of location-specific loot, uh, maybe something different to the buttons, energy spheres and bulletproof container kind of things? Yeah, I mean, it's so, yeah, I mean, with new locations, it's, it's probably pretty clear that we would want to also have new location challenges. Um, as far as, like, going back through what's currently available and, like, adding more content into those locations. It's not something we really want to do. Um, and the reason for that is because it feels really content complete. Um, you guys have talked on that front for us um, in your own experiences and also our internal play tests have indicated as such as well. That's not to say that new side missions couldn't take you back through the path of what you know, uh, the locations that you've been to and whatnot. And maybe there will be a couple new secrets that show up here and there, maybe. But that's not, that's not the priority, right? The priority is creating entirely new content in entirely new spaces. Also, I just realized that I had a chaperone, uh, which is part of the escort duty set as well. Um, so I could actually get the full three set bonus. I'm just not sure I want it. This is, this is tricky. This is tricky. But uh, let's go ahead and answer the next question as I think on this a little bit further. Um yeah, this one's a, a quite a complex question, seemingly, from the guy in the distance okay. over on Twitch. Um, they had a question about an item that was shown at the end of the last stream. Uh, they think it was called the Deteriorator. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, they want to know, how will its special attribute interact with perks, weapon attributes that trigger on critical hits, critical damage, and kills with crits? 
Yeah. Considering it applies its crit damage on a corrosion dot, I have to wonder what about crit happens and symphony of destruction. Yes, yeah, so basically if it's creating an area of effect attack, every single enemy that is considered part of that attack will also take that corrosion damage. So if you're finding little combinations like that, it should feel like you're cheating in the best way possible. Very much intended and that's how we are moving forward with that mindset. So yeah, anytime you sort of see that style of, could this do that thing that I'm thinking that it's gonna do? The answer is probably yes. The answer is probably yes. Excellent. Right, I've got one last question for the time being. Uh, from Pesky Husky again over on the Tube of You. Uh, have we got any plans to add custom text to the ship as a, one of the modifications? Oh, like naming the ship itself? Uh, yeah, either that or that... possibly one of the decals. Oh, like, okay, yeah, like on the side of the ship too. Mm -hmm. um, no, there aren't any plans to do that. At a certain point during like early access, actually no, even before early access, there was this concept of being able to name your ship that was floating around there. Um, you know, it's it's something that does sound like a lot of fun, uh, but it's incredibly difficult to validate that as a, a priority system um, whenever the means to type is limited for console players. Whenever we're making a lot of the decisions for the game, we want it to be an overarching thing where everyone has full access to it. And while there's certainly a means to have, you know, a console open up with its keyboard and you like type it in by like moving the, the joystick around absolutely is, is possible, it's not nearly as functional. And as such, we would more like to veer away from that style of engagement, even with the saving the games, the saving the names of the, the saves, like that was such in dispute because of that very reason alone. And that's before we get into the topic of localization as well. It's There's a lot of details that come with it is basically the short answer here. And no, it's not something that we're prioritizing. It's not something that we are, we even have in the plans. Is it a nice to have? Yes but it's, it would have to come at a time where we have literally nothing else on our plate, nothing else that's taking precedence. And right now there's a lot of things that are on our plate that are taking precedence. Excellent. You can fly on now, pilot. All right, very good. I am going to use this Jaeger. I'm, I, I want to, so I'm just going to do it. We're just going to make it happen. So I did swap around a couple of things. I emptied out a lot of what we've been hanging on to. Um, let's... I, mm, let's go ahead and activate it. Um, so we have a Jaeger now with a scatter gun. So we have a kind of a, a combination of lots of energy DPS with lots of kinetic, but our kinetic is gonna require us to be up close and personal. We also are now using um, the two set bonus from escort duty. So this is granting us plus 25% bonus to our resistance attribute. So you can see here that our resistance, uh, that should be listed there. That's totally a bug. Let me write that down. Isn't it fun watching dev builds where things can go awry? <laughs> I should definitely be listed there and it's definitely not getting increased either. At least it doesn't look like it is. Actually, let's just let's just bug, bug test right now. Let's see if it's, no, it is. Okay, it is getting adjusted. It's definitely getting adjusted. It's just not listed. Okay, well, that's that's a small bug. Small bug, but still a bug. Didn't think that you were going to watch live QA from Rockfish Games, did you? That's right. All right. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Oh, actually, wait. I want to mark all as red. I'm so happy I've got all the guides and tutorials done. Ah! It makes me happy, just nice, complete, and 14 out of 14. It's because we have this one added. This is coming soon. The ship customization detail right here, just making things a little bit more known to you. Um, or actually, no, it's not the ship customization. It's, is it the ship customization? It's the ship dealer. Ah, that's the one I'm looking for. Ship dealer, this one's coming new. A new tutorial element uh, that you have not seen yet. This one just kind of helps you understand the differences between the ships the first time you go to a ship dealer. And again, this is kind of because we've seen a lot of y'all stick with like the Sentinel. Explore your options. Explore your options. So this is kind of your call to action to look at the differences of the different ships and why those values are changing. Don't be scared just because your ship no longer has any hole with the light ship. It promotes new opportunities that you wouldn't have otherwise had. Same thing with heavies. 
Um, you look at heavies, it's like, oh, all the figures are going up except for handling and speed. Oh, that's not really a big deal. Well, you know, you have to take those notes uh, into consideration based on your play styles and uh, your items and all of that stuff. So just added this little addendum to help you out a little bit further. Let's get back into space. All right. We have our Jaeger. We have our scatter gun. Let's go use it. Actually, let's go let's go build up our drones first. <laughs> Probably don't want to, you know, engage without drones in a Vindicator. Some drones just to test out our scatter gun. Great job, drones. Here you can do it. Go over here next. Mining equipment, perfect. Let's go ahead and explore a little bit more of this location. We've seen some damaged buoys. Let's just follow the lights. Or rather, in this case, follow the markers. Oh, my drones. Oh, my drones. It hurts. The pain. Oh, yeah. Look at how fast their shields are draining now with this weapon. And their hole, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The challenge here, though, is, of course, that now that we're using these weapons, we're going to have to be much more close to our targets. It's like this Tormentor who, whew, they can be pretty lethal. But so can we now. Look at that. So can we now. Grab these credits, and then we're going to head on over to the next buoy. Whoa! Did I mention that heavies kind of don't have very much handling? <laughs> At least the chaperone typo got fixed from last time. Yeah, no, that was that was 100% my fault. I'm not even gonna shy away from that. <clears throat> Sometimes we get ideas and we're like, oh yeah, let's slap this in there, and I wrote it all out, and then afterwards it was like, oh yeah, there's definitely supposed to be an E at the end of there. Yeah, it happens. Turns out that we're all human over here at Rockfish. Crazy. That reminds me, Gary, we need to replace Michael's batteries. <laughs> all right. <sighs> Whoop, ow! Aw, oh, man. What's so something that's really cool to do is that if you do hit your opponent with enough uh, power, what those elites, before they have the opportunity to boost their shields, let's see if we can... Actually, wait. I'm gonna let him get down a little bit further. Before he boosts his armor... Ah, dang it. He boosted his armor. You can actually destroy them before they boost that armor. We missed it there, though. So we had to face off against him again a little bit. But good stuff. One of the changes to the Jaeger was its fire rate. Uh, it might have been, yeah. It's hard for me to remember all the changes. You can probably imagine that with the number of little tweaks and adjustments we made, but. All right, let's see. Where are we going next? Into the debris, apparently. Ouch. All right, let's look for more buoys. There's a minefield over there. So probably a buoy too, right? Nope. Just, just the death of all of our drones. Okay, all right. Did we already repair this one? Yes, okay. One buoy, two buoy. It's gonna be a little bit more thoughtful on how we're looking around, it looks like. Dang it, I didn't wanna have to think. I just wanted to, oh my gosh. How dare we make people think when playing this game? 
Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's almost like there's a reason why it is a game. Like it's supposed to challenge you as a player to overcome some sort of obstacle or challenge. Ridiculous. How dare we. I'm gonna grab this shipwreck. Here's another damage buoy. Perfect! to go. We just gotta look for that red light somewhere. That's fine. You're scratching the hell out of that new paint job. <laughs> it's not... It's, uh... Here, can I get some light on it? Here, hang on a second. I mean, it's it's a very dark paint job. It's, it's meant to hide all the scratches, but yeah, you can definitely see the scratches, that's for sure. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we're, we're beating the heck out of this thing. It's fine, though. Oh, man, even the caution uh, sticker is coming off. Yikes. Right. I'm sure it's fine. Caution. Eric's flying it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. But also true. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're going to get more of this titanium. Always useful. Always useful to have more resources. Never know what perk you need to upgrade. Now it's just a simple matter of probably following the buoys, looking for a big red light away from, you know, the sun that's here, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it at all. So we're gonna fly into it so that we can then look this way and see we got a green light there. I see another green light. Last drone remaining, oh my gosh. Here we are. Just a little bit of looking around, my goodness. Location challenge complete! Location challenges will always, wow, that was a little hiccup. They will always reward a um, mainframe component. That's what they're called. Whenever you get three of these, you can create a mainframe expansion and then you can use those to start upgrading your attributes a little bit. A little bit further. So they're not technically necessary to become strong enough to overcome like the game, but if you're a min-maxer and or also a completionist, they're a really nice bonus to have to top off a particular build or to top off the game itself in full completion. Grab this biomass and then I think we're gonna head on out of this area. Oh, that's a rock! What a doozy. Let's go visit uh, Marie DeVent first and repair up. Repair on up. So guys, I do want to also mention, we are going to be answering questions um, here in a little bit, one more time. Uh, then we're going to be transitioning into a little segment where we like to highlight the community screenshots, something that we try to do every sort of week. Um, we grab most of them from the Discord, but we also don't shy away from ones that are taken through other means as well. And if you want to be a part of that, if, you know, when we're up and coming, these screenshots are like, wow, some of those are really cool. I wish my, mine would get highlighted. Share them with us. Find a way to share them with us. Usually through Discord is the best method. You could also take a screenshot, share it with us on Twitter. You could share it on Facebook. You could share it, you know, wherever that you're coming from. Uh, and we can have a wonderful time saying, hey, that's really cool. Let's highlight that. It's something that we like to do. So, yeah. Good, good stuff. I'm going to fly over to one more location in Union. Maybe we'll maximize our um, escort duty. Maybe we won't. I'm not sure. I don't want to do another high risk. I'm not sure if that's the time I want to spend here. Let's go to... Oh, yeah. We still need to complete a number of side quests that we've been gaining. Woo! So many side quests, honestly. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and do a little bit more for uh, Mr. Kato. Or rather, for Daryl. Hmm.
All right. Oh man, there's a there's a lot we haven't done here yet. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Well, let's at least do this. So we are going to take this guy out, get some more drones, and then we're going to engage with this terminal over here. To start this side mission for Daryl. Deliver a shield helps him out way more than I wanted it to. Come on. Oh. <laughs> you see that drone I ran into? It just toppled <laughs> over. That was great. Uh, probably want to boost ourselves up so we don't immediately die. There we go. Keep collecting items because the more items we sort of collect up, it's going to help boost us at least for the moment. Woo! All right, hang on a second. We are gonna just take a breather. Man, these freelancer ships are strong. Oh! I missed it, I missed it. Unfortunate. Oops. Yeah. You know, it's so funny, because I thought, Oh, we're gonna swap to a Vindicator today? I don't. I can be a little bit more careless because they're just so strong because the drones pull all the enemy away from you. Whoops! That's what I get for thinking that. But the good news is that we have been refining the checkpoint system. So uh, even though it kind of sucks uh, that I died, it's a good way to highlight how we've been kind of revamping the saves in the game. So a big part of how this ends up working is that whenever you are finding items and you're collecting them, there are going to be momentary saves for goods that you find. So like if you were to, uh, you know, collect a particular item from like a um, <coughs> bulletproof container, for example, and then a couple minutes later, you get into an engagement and you die. The old system we had meant that you would have to start from the beginning of entering the location. The new system will autosave whenever you pick up a particular specialty item or complete a, a special event in a location, and you'll continue from that point instead. That way you're not gonna miss out on something that you found or work that you've accomplished if you've been in a location for a while, uh, just as a better process for you know enjoyment as a whole. We also have it to where you can do quick saves which I can't do at the moment because Hive's blabbing his face. Hive <laughs> talking, never. I know, right? He's almost as bad as I am. <laughs> Alright, so let's go get another drone at least. Before we start. And we'll try again. You've lost progress in the past, yeah. Yeah, Super Scrapper, we know, we know. It's it's something that we kind of made observations of. And it's like, you know what? We need to adjust this. We need, to, we need to take a step back and say, how can we make this better? And that's why we are looking into it and why we are doing it is creating this uh, quick save ability as well as the new location saves as well.
All right, here we go. Yeah, all right, let's focus over here because that's where all the fire is coming from. All right. Stop that. That's a lot of damage. I said stop it. Honestly, I like doing the the medium nanobots. It's because like they're the biggest bang for your buck, even though they're debatably less useful than the large nanobots, which restore more in the heat of the moment. All right, here we go. Here we go. Ouch pain, ouch pain. There we go. Hoping those drones will take care of the other guy. Of course they're not. Ugh. Trying to keep everything in front of me because of this particular item, this bulkhead. 30% damage reduction to armor from frontal attacks. Granted, that means we need to have armor. Uh, <clears throat> we have a little armor now, right? Every kill we can restore a little bit. Alright, here we go. That's good, that's good. Oh, come on! There we go. Good. These are coming together so much better this time. Goodness. Amazing what happens when you play with your hands instead of your feet. There we go. Excellent. do this quick thing here since union hasn't leveled up again this will be real easy to take care of i just want to do it right now peruser hey that could come in handy all right let's go get the codes Quick save? Can I normal save? Oh no, I'm not allowed. Alright. 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 Go to the security terminal now. Hold it. You don't have the required permission for this access. Now give me a break. Another alarm. I'm kinda wondering if maybe I should uh use my magnetic repulsor again. All these asteroids around, I could do some serious damage. So we'll keep Keep using this for the moment.
So we have, we've been using our device uh, consumable, which allows us to use our devices very shortly after they get used, which is basically the only reason why I'm alive right now, pretty sure. We'll take it. Oh man, he survived. Oh, I thought this guy was like the first one we took out. That's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and uh, make some more nanobots. <laughs> it's too late for that. <laughs> Woo. One. Jeez. Ah! Nonsense. You be quiet. Hive. One more. All right. Man, that was so easy. <laughs> You're just very lucky that your ship wasn't made of aluminium. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, if uh, we had a similar situation like that with the scout, I don't know if I would still be here. That's uh, that's probably fair. I did that to cover for that actual hack. Now that the second attack was simulated, the security code is still valid. Anyway, you fret too much. Bad for your help. See you around. No, you're bad for my help. Uh, she's gone. <laughs> Got him on that one. Cool. So that's going to be nice progress for us um, getting into the next territory of the uh, <clears throat> Kato side missions. That's going to open up the doors for tier four ships, which all things considered, we are just about ready for. I mean, currently we're flying a tier three plus, I believe. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, we found our first legendary! Look at that! Our first legendary! Omni Manus! Hello there! Good to see you! Oh, that's that's very pleasing to discover right now. Uh, granted, I do like the Escort Duty bulkhead, but the sheer amount of armor and repair per kill, plus the fact that the missile defense system is unlocking a new ability, I think we have to go with this. Not to mention the slew of new item modifiers. Holy cow, we're gonna do that. We are gonna do that. For anybody who is watching this for the first time, also note the reason why this dropped is because we are playing in Nightmare difficulty is the highest difficulty in Everspace 2. And when you do that, there is a small chance, very small chance, that legendaries can drop through the course of the game. Now I'm over geared, says Florio. Oh my gosh. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to get our missile defense system out here. Um, also, can we, how many, oh, we have a lot of memory re recalibrators. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that off of some other stuff. Um, because we definitely want to use the missile defense system. Do we not have the Wait. Oh, there it is. All right. Um, 
I like the teleporter. I like the nano transmitter. Also helps out in a pinch for saving drones in my own butt. Uh, I like the front shield generator. Am I changing the EMP generator out for... I think I am. I think I'm going to do this. Oh my gosh, the EMP generator is like used all the time from so many different ships. But I think we're going to do this specifically because of this particular um, <clears throat> legendary. So we are going to... Uh, we're going to use sustenance, I think. We're going to try and capitalize on when missiles are hitting us. We're going to just like lengthen that duration. And that way, basically enemies that are firing rockets at us go to it i guess a tormentor for example we should be for example for example <laughs> we go up against a tormentor we should be able to do some serious damage but all that being said now is a time where we need to get out of range of combat we've got the red glow above and below us now it's done now the game is auto saved you can see it in the upper right hand corner i didn't even touch the quick save button but that's just a a, a little adjustment that we ended up making for the game state but even more so, see, we have this quick save, uh, but then we also had uh, just the standard save in the area, but I can also do a quick save. I'd rather do the save over the top of the nightmare run itself. Awesome. And that is where we're gonna pause the gameplay segment for the day. I'm gonna go get some extra water. When I come back, we're gonna transition over to the more community side of segments. And we're going to highlight some screenshots we've collected from the last two weeks, as well as answer any of those burning questions that have been waiting to be responded to. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Also, have a look at our other social locations where you could possibly join us and have conversations with us on a daily basis. Here you go, right here. Scrolling marquee. It's all there. It's all there. Be right back. Stay hydrated, hope y'all got some water. Taking care of them bodies of yours. Mm. And we're back. All right, so now, uh, pfft, come on. There we go. Now, we are in the segment where we're highlighting community screenshots. Could you stop, please, seriously? <laughs> Goodness, uh, my computer is acting up today. But uh, here is where we are gonna be answering a slew of more questions, as I mentioned earlier, and we're also going to be um, showcasing some very glorious screenshots that we've gotten along the way in our journeys, as well as your own. So this first shot comes from Ace of Blades. Uh, they haven't actually shared some screenshots for a while. They came back to revisit Everspace 2. I think they said it's been like a year since they've played it. They were doing a lot of early access stuff and feedback. Um, and they're just having the time of their life. Uh, it's like a brand new game, I believe is what they said. A nice little shot to boot. So, um, as we continue through these shots, we are gonna be answering those questions. So Gary, go ahead and shoot me a question as we transfer over to an Eastern European screenshot from Everspace One. Cool. Uh, right, we've got a question from Flory over on Twitch. 
Uh, and he's just wondering why is there a repair and a quick repair option? At least for them, they only use the quick repair. Uh, and do the stats say that the normal repair is getting used? Uh, yeah, I mean, basically the, the difference is that the normal repair option allows you to repair each individual thing. You can also do kind of like see the values of each one, um, whereas the quick repair just does all of it and refills your missiles all in one fell swoop. Um, so, or excuse me, the, just rep the missiles is the other one, restock, repair, restock. Um, so yeah, it's honestly like it originally just started off as you had to go in and repair each individual thing. And then we added the quick repair option on top of that. Yes, it's mostly used by the majority of people, but just having that secondary option to just see and get that added information of each individual part, <clears throat> we're not gonna remove it. It's there so you can do that but obviously quick repair is there for that very fast convenience. So yeah, that's that's honestly the reason why. So nothing crazy, nothing uh, wild on that front. This next image comes from Cargo Jacker. In fact, we have several images that come from Cargo Jacker. I just like this gunship. I, I'm always a fan when individuals show their particular color schemes and how they're bringing things together. It is a clever usage of using the lights on their ship as a different color than the the color of the ship itself makes it pop quite a lot. So what's another question we have? Right, we've got a question from M. Eberhardt over on YouTube and they're wondering, uh, will there be any kind of expansion to the map that we use where you could maybe see missed side missions because uh, they're fairly certain that they've missed some of them in their playthrough? Okay, so I see what they're saying. So, it, because like if you haven't gone to like a station that starts the side mission, how would you know yeah. that you have to go to the station in order to start the side mission? Um, yeah, you know, that's that's an interesting point. Um, it's a challenging one because we don't want to just give you all the information of how to complete everything all at once, right? Because like if you go into a system and then you have like, 17 things ping you and say, hey, you have to go here to start this, or you have to go there to start that other thing. That's kind of the de defeating the point of exploring and, and finding it out, right? It's that sense of discovery that we don't just give you all that information up front. Now, there are means as you progress later into the game, and we might even get there in the next stream or so, um, where you can unlock the ability to know how much you've actually collected and how much more there could potentially be um, through various perks and whatnot. But um, as far as side missions go, um, I mean, I kind of like the idea of maybe completing the full game. It would then unlock your ability to know where missed side, side missions would be, for example. Um, but that's a conversation we'd have to have internally on what that would potentially look like from a development standpoint. Um, so I'm not gonna throw it out the window and say it's not possible. It's definitely something that we could do, but we have a lot of priorities of bringing new content into the game as is, and it's not just the small content from the free fall update, but also the content from the DLC as well. Lots of plans, lots of moving parts, um, but uh, your site, your suggestion is welcome. Um, and you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some room to grow there. So, but for now it is more bound to the idea of if you want to discover all the things you're gonna have to go out and truly discover it. So possibly a little bit annoying of an answer in some regards, but uh, that's how exploration games tend to work. So we'll see if more can be done. This next shot also comes from Cargo Jacker um, and did a nice job on presenting this particular location out in Zarkov. Um, the regional area is called the Eye, and I just felt like this had a strong parallel with that, which is one of the reasons why I chose it. It's really nice. And I think it also got some, some thumbs up from Discord as well. So uh, let's go ahead and answer another question. Uh, right, uh, from the wizard that is called Jerry over on YouTube. Uh, they want to know, is there any plan to expand the home base storage size in the future? <laughs> That's really, that's such a great question. So, um, <clears throat> no, there's not. There, there's not really plans to expand the storage uh, size at this time. That being said, because there's just more stuff to have and to hold in the future, um, it's definitely not out of the question. Just not currently in the plans is all. Just not currently in the plans. Uh, Cargo Jacker again, what? Computer, please. 
I'm begging you, just cooperate <laughs> today. Um, man, I'm really glad I avoided all those spoiler things off of my desktop. Um, anyway, so Cargo Jacker uh, has another clever shot here with the use of the thermogun uh, spreading itself out. Just got almost like an artistic shot in a way. Um, just thought it was, you know, clever. I want to give it at least some recognition. So uh, good stuff, Cargo Jacker. Really enjoy your shots. Let's go ahead and answer another question. Uh, Pesky Husky uh, over on YouTube again. Uh, they just wanted to know how they could obtain some blueprints for like special weapons like the Executioner or for Bloodstar. Uh, can they be obtained? Because they think they've heard that uh, you are able to get blueprints for them. Uh, so at this time, there's not the ability to do that. Um, at a certain point, we did have it do that and it created a lot of problems actually so what our mentality was is that there would be two separate types of items when it comes to crafting we want it to be as basic as possible it doesn't actually make a lot of sense to us that you would just um, be able to build any sort of type of weapon like if you're going to build some sort of blood star weapon it's going to be through accident like you're going to improvise a you know a, a scatter gun and oh my gosh you you fitted it incorrectly but it actually has become a repeater Right? Um, and so like, you have a chance of getting that more specialized stuff through improvising, through crafting, but to build out those specific things, it's not something that we wanted to do. Otherwise your crafting blueprints are just gonna go through the roof uh, for one. Um, and also it makes crafting much more powerful than it's intended to actually be. I said that, and I'm gonna say it one more time. It would make crafting much more powerful than it's intended to be. Crafting has always meant to fill in the gaps and help power you up along your journey to level 30, but crafting should not be the means to build exactly what you need to optimize everything, especially when you're min-maxing and tweaking uh, and refining in the end game status. So that's what modifying is for, and perhaps we'll talk more about that uh, next week. So this next shot comes from Crispy Muffin. Crispy Muffin had a slew of screenshots that were quite delightful. This one, I mean, gosh, I love how cinematic this one is. And this Okar Corvette just kind of flying away um, from, or rather, in fact, it is the Interceptor that is flying away. Um, is that cloaked? Is, I can't even tell what particular effect is going on there, but it's really cool. Um, as this Corvette's just getting blasted, that explosion looks so good. Uh, it seriously looks like a scene from an action movie and uh, just kudos all around, Crispy Muffin. Love the shots you take. You're a galactic photographer for a reason, that's for sure. Uh, what's another question we have floating out there? <clears throat> right, uh, Flory's asking a question again from Twitch. Um, will we ever see fight AI controlled player ships? Question mark. Since all traders sell them, I found it, they found it a bit weird that they can only, we can fly them. Yeah. So the gamification um, on this front means that no, you will never see that. And it's very intentional on this front because we want your ship to be yours. We don't want anyone else to have it. We don't want anyone else to be flying it. We don't want anyone else to uh, even be close to it in this game space. So again, it's, it's gamified on that front. Like all these ships that are being sold, technically they're out there, but you only ever see the one that you have that you've customized because that is yours and yours alone. And its silhouette needs to stand out on that front too. We've taken a lot of great care in this regard. Just ask Matthias, um, making sure that each of the 3D models uh, impacts your style accordingly and nobody else. This is also the same reason why we don't want you flying Okar ships or, or outlaw ships or anything like that, because we want your ship to stand out as a very unique only one that exists in this world. So yeah. Um, that's that's why that decision was made. That's kind of uh, how it comes together. The closest you're going to get to that are the wreckages that you find, which are basically of a gunship and of a uh, stinger, I think, which are prior clones in, in some cases. But that's about it. This shot also comes from Crispy Muffin. I think that there's a wonderful uh, story to be told here with this desecrated colonial warship lingering in the background and its wreckage floating all about. And again, this use of scale uh, that Crispy Muffin uses with his, his particular ship all the way up here, just showing you how massive this colossal vessel was 
really? <laughs> Goodness. So <laughs> fickle. My computer is so fickle today. Um, I just love how it comes together. I think it's a fantastic screenshot. I would love to print this out as a poster and slap it on my wall. You know, it's one of those types of shots. Uh, what's another question we got? Um, Spoots just come in with a, a kind of expansion on the player ship question, uh, okay, just cool. out of curi curiosity. Um, uh, did the team ever talk about attaching them to backer named NPCs? Uh, so we do have a couple backer named NPCs uh, through a particular tier, but that comes from more of like the wanted characters that you have to track down through bounties. Um, we that's that's about that's about all I can you know cover on that front. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. I don't really think there's anything else to say <laughs> on that. But, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I think overall we just wanted to, the ship names to be particularly specific with a couple of uh, backer named ships and then named pilots of bounty ships that you're hunting, and that's that's about as much as we want to do with the the customization on that front. So maybe there will be more. It's 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 hard to say honestly. Um, we know there's a desire to like name your own ship, but um, as I mentioned before, there's a, there's a few complications with that. This shot comes from Cami, and I actually had a double take on this because I at first somehow thought that this was Everspace One. That looked like a GMB facility that you could fly by, um, and I don't know how I thought the spaceship itself looked like an Everspace One spaceship because it doesn't at all. Um, I just, I don't know, I have like a memory lapse, uh, but I do like the way that they've aligned their ship here, uh, the positioning of the planets in the background. It just comes together really nicely. I think they did a good job. So kudos to you on that front. We're gonna move on over to a shot from Kazaa as well. Um, he has <clears throat> done a number of refined shots. This one also focuses kind of like where Crispy Muffin was on that sense of scale. When you're flying through Drake, especially in these sites where there's these massive asteroids you're flying in between and the way that the light shimmers through these asteroids. Gosh, I just love that effect so much. I just, everything <clears throat> everything comes together incredibly well here, bringing it to fruition. And it's just a, a sound screenshot. So very well done on that front. I'm gonna transfer over to one more shot. This one comes from number nine. Uh, this is their first shot of three. Let's go ahead and answer another question as we're going to cycle through a couple of theirs. All right. Uh, Pesky Husky uh, over on YouTube is wondering, you picked up the Omnimanus, which was the legendary at level 19, yep. and obviously he, when you reach level 30, can you keep upgrading the Omnimanus one level at a time by investing resources, or does he have to get a new one at level 30, for example? I would have to get a new one at level 30. Um, there were, you could almost say there were some disputes internally on how we would manage the way that um, items would grow with the player, but ultimately we decided on this method where the items stay the level that they are with the modification of allowing it to go up one level, except for legendaries, because legendaries are a huge boost to where you're currently at if you're not level three yet. Um, even in the gameplay uh, segment that you saw, when I picked that thing up, the stat increases were absurd. It's just a massive jump, even though it was the exact same level of the currently being used armor. So I had to use that legendary and it's gonna get phased out. It's not gonna get phased out immediately. It'll actually last pretty soundly for maybe three, four, and even five levels, uh, depending on what else it is I find. But inevitably, much like all the other components of your ship, you do have to find ways to cycle them out for something that is better, even if that means experimenting with new tools that you hadn't done before with. Of course, when you reach that level 30 point, then it's all about those legendaries and figuring out how it binds together with uh, the rest of your ship to maximize your abilities. But uh, until you reach that point, um, those legendaries you could find along the way will serve you quite well for a number of levels uh, quite strongly. And that's intended that they get phased out. This shot also comes from number nine. I um, think it's a pretty cool shot just in general always neat seeing how you guys are taking down your foes there's something about the redeemer being upside down here and just the it's almost like it's almost like the redeemer is a missile that they fired off their vessel like <laughs> it's i don't know i don't know how to describe this any better but uh, i i like this shot we'll leave it at that clever shot indeed and we're also going to cycle over to number nine's last shot as well 
they enjoyed a lot of these missile style shots in fact uh, a slew of them more on the discord you should go check it out um, but uh, a lot of you guys like this one you gave it a thumbs up so highlighting as well nice poster shot indeed what's another question we got do we have any more Yes, we've got one okay. more cool. uh, from Slorine Tetson over on YouTube. Um, okay. Will we ever see the ability to pick other weapons for the Vindicator drones? Hmm, that's a curious question. You know, that I think would be a pretty neat feature. I think the team in general thinks that would be a pretty neat feature. And I know that's something that we at least talked on once, uh, either before early access or during early access at one point or another. Um, but at the end of the day, we know that each of the ships should have a respectable amount of customization equal to each of the other classes of ships. And if we were to draw that level of attention into the Vindicator, uh, well, depending on how much detail we would do, that would make the Vindicator much more customizable than the other classes. And it simply isn't really that fair. In a lot of cases, that would mean there would be vastly more Vindicator build opportunities than any other classes, and that's not really something that we want to promote. It's not something that we really want to go in a direction for. So that probably makes a lot of sense. Now, and you know, all of that being said, something could change along the way. We could find ways that you could customize each of the different classes in a certain degree, and then the Vindicator's way to customize would be through like the, the drone's weapons. There's a dream there but keep the possibility of that as like this big, okay? So, you know, I'm not saying it's off the table. I'm not saying that it hasn't ever been discussed because it certainly has, but we also want that consistency across the board for player agency to have equal opportunity wherever they're going. Cool, I love that question, love that question. This shot uh, is one that's very similar to what a lot of individuals take whenever they first experience the site. It's just a glorious location. Uh, when you first get there. This one comes from Phantom Lord. And it's just a delightful shot to see how detailed our underground segments can be. Um, and uh, the light source makes this shot shine so much. I did poke around. I was like trying to find their player ship. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I think their player ship is off screen. I really wanted to know what they were flying, even though it has no relevance on the overarching uh, shot itself. But uh, yeah. So kudos to you, Phantom Lord. Love how it comes together. Um, Gary, if you do um, discover another question, just interrupt me. I will indeed. Cool. This next shot comes from Seth1784. We did um, a small update. I can't remember which one it was where we added some more stuffs that you could encounter in the rifts. And this is one of those sort of structures that you could discover in the rifts at a later point in our development. And Seth capitalized on it in a pretty powerful way. I love the way that he's brought that together. Um, and uh, it's good stuff. It's, can't really complain too much about it. Um, I love the way that it glows and makes things happy. Uh, and I, lo <coughs> I love how my screen keeps doing this. Seriously, I gotta figure out why it's doing <laughs> that. That's annoying. I really am glad there's nothing on my desktop that's uh, <laughs> rough around the edges, but anyway. Um, love the way that it's highlighted, especially the, the widescreen shots too. It's pretty glorious. Um, engine colors too, the customization of the ship, the lighting, the colors, all of that stuff. Also something to appreciate. Always a fan of seeing how you have pimped out your rides, if you will. Really, really good stuff. Next shot comes from Sonozaki, who's always taking these widescreen shots. And this one is... This like comes from like a sci-fi, like almost soap opera sort of, the vibes I'm getting are so good. The contrast of the asteroids and the shadows bridging over these mysterious alien style, you know, environment. It, it, everything about this is glorious. Everything about this is so delightful. Kudos to you, Sonozaki why your galactic photographer is very easy to see. Love what you're doing, keep doing it. Goodness, so good. We're gonna jump over to the Chemical Bro who's got a slew of shots to highlight as well. This uh, Chemical Bro is known for his high contrast shots. So each one of these, you can see just the light and the dark and their beautiful contrast and uh, also does a pretty good job with scale. 
seeing this asteroid in the background. Like you can see right here, the asteroid's almost like broken apart. I love that. I love the intentionality with our environmental design, but also this station, which is definitely not in a good spot. Um, that needs to ripe exploration to occur. Excuse me, got the hiccups. So I love how it's brought together from the Chemical Bro. Um, we only have a couple more shots because we have a couple more minutes and then I gotta go. This shot comes from the Chemical Bro <coughs> as well. Uh, again, highlighting that uh, a bit of contrast and also the angle here is pretty neat too. Um, it, I had to do like a little bit of a double take because I was like, why is he firing at the station? Oh no, that's actually a drone. That's a retaliator drone carrier in front of the station. Uh, it is as, as a pleasant sort of like, I don't know, realization sort of thing. You probably get what I'm saying. It's, it just feels good. It's a feel good shot. Definitely love how it comes together. This next one comes from the Chemical Bro as well. Another one of his explorative shots, a uh, bit darker, but gives that sense of wanting to go out there, see what's around the corner and uh, just be invited for that challenge of discovery. I've always been a big fan of that style of photography and I think it's captured incredibly well throughout our game, Everspace 2. Uh, last but not least, we have Winged Nightmare just going into the unknown. Uh, I love it. We'll just end on that one. Guys, thank you so much across the board from Twitch, from YouTube, from Facebook to Steam. All of you have been absolutely awesome. I have been absolutely Eric, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I am thrilled with our audience that we've had today, you've asked some great questions. Oh my gosh, I hope that you'll bring that same level of energy to next week, because we're probably gonna talk about some things next week. I have a hunch, call it probably a good hunch. So definitely hoping you're gonna be able to join <laughs> us for that. And uh, yeah, definitely have a very wonderful and safe weekend. All right, Gary, did you wanna say anything before, we, before I, I lock this out? No, thank you, uh, everybody that's been joining us, uh, especially the new people from Facebook. They've asked some wonderful questions. And uh, yeah, if you do want to join us over on the Discord, on the socials, please do. Please do. Uh, we're more the merrier. Awesome. Thank you for that, Gary. All right, guys. Don't stop being awesome. I'll stop being Eric. And we'll catch you next time. Toodles! Hello, everybody. For those newcomers around here, at the end of the streams, I do like to have a little bit of fun. Uh, my time is short, so we're just gonna get right into it. Uh, just again, thank you so much for all of your support, for coming into the videos and you know giving it likes, subscribes, all of that stuff from wherever you're at. It really does mean a lot. Giving us more exposure to talk about our game to the masses is always a plus. We just wanna share our game with those to have a quality experience and for those of you who help in that regards, it's it's just amazing. So thank you. Sincerely, we are so thrilled to have you supporting this cause. Can't wait to have more content for you very soon. Boom, boom, boom.
A little bit more light today. A little more light. Have a great weekend. Woo! Gotta rest the throat, you know what I'm saying? Oof. <laughs> Get out of here, guys. Gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>